Hey everyone, I am Carrie the Mortician and I am here with our first attempt at Who Wants to Be a Mortician? Uh, kind of a game show at practicing for the national board exam. My disclaimer, all of these questions have been pulled from Quizlets online or from national board exam study guides. I don't remember my exam hardly at all because it was 20 years ago. So I couldn't tell you a single question from it. So I'm not pulling directly from information received from a national board exam at all. All right, so we are gonna play with Adriana, Brittany, and Ricky. We are gonna play until one person gets 10 correct answers. Now the national board exam is all multiple choice. Um, but for today, we are going to do some open-ended questions um, along with multiple choice. So let's see how this goes. So our first question, contestants. I feel like a game show host, like I need a different voice or something that I need to do while we're doing this. All right. So our first question is multiple choice. Jane Smith died with no spouse. She has nine children. Several express they would like to choose cremation as the disposition. In a state that requires 60% of next of kin, how many of them must agree to the cremation? Your options are three, five, six, or seven. Adriana, you just have to unmute, there you go. <laughs> Um, I'd say six. Correct. If you do the percentage of 60% of nine, it's like 5.78, whatever it is. Um, so you would round up so that you have to have six of the nine kids have to give consent for the cremation. Excellent. One point for Adriana. What is the name of the military form needed to claim any veteran benefits? Ricky. Uh, DD-214. Correct. One point for you. Define Brunkel. Adriana. I just really wanted to say that word because it's kind of fun. Is it like, like a skin, like abscess? I guess that would be the word. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Go a little deeper. Um, what causes that skin abscess? I can't remember. <laughs> Ricky, <laughs> did somebody else wants to try. Go ahead, Ricky. Uh, yeah, I know it's a group of like pustule um, abscesses. It's like a terrible, okay, yeah, it's a group of them. I think it's caused by inflammation. So I know it's like a group of like pus filled little bumps. That sounds delightful. <laughs> Brittany, do you want to give a little more attempt at the full correct? I don't recall that at all. <laughs> so yeah. we're going to give no points because we're not specific. It's an infection that exists in a sweat gland or hair follicle. So it's going to cause like pus filled, but it's because there's an infection in your sweat gland or in a follicle. For uncle, I think it sounds like fur uncle, like, you know, if you're a cat mom and you have a brother, that's what I think it sounds like. So, all right. Fun, fun, good times, isn't it? Makes you feel smart and then it makes you feel kind of like you don't know anything all in the same five minutes. It's amazing. All right, this is gonna be a multiple choice again. When embalming babies, which of the following is the same as used for adults? A, we gotta to listen to all of them, Ricky. A, use of a needle injector to close the mouth. B, positioning of both hands over the body. C, use of the same type of arterial fluids or D, use of the ascending aorta as an injection site. Okay, Brittany, which of those is the same for 
a baby and an adult when it comes to embalming. You gotta unmute yourself. Sorry, is it D? D? Like dog? No. Oh. <laughs> Ricky? I think Adriana had it first. Okay, way. Adriana. Can you repeat the answers again? Sorry, I'm just yes. trying to. Use of the needle injector to close the mouth, positioning of both hands over the body, use of the same type of arterial fluids, or use of the ascending aorta as an injection site. Is it C? It is C. So D, the problem with D was you don't use the ascending aorta typically on an adult. Um, because that's right down in the, in your abdomen, like kind of, you know, so you wouldn't use that on an adult typically. I think that would be super messy to get to on an adult as you can use anything else. So that is, it is D. The person who executes a promissory note is called the A, maker, B, payee, C, drawee, or D, drawer. It's the person who executes a promissory note. Adriana. Is it the pay? Pay? It is yeah. not. It is okay. Not. Brittany. Can you just repeat the uh, answers one more time? <laughs> Yeah, the person who executes a promissory note is the maker, the payee, the drawee, or the drawer. Uh, I'm gonna go with maker. It is the maker. That is the person who makes the guarantee to pay and sign. So they're executing and creating the promissory note. I think when it comes to questions, some of these, it's the words that are used in the question are the same as in the answer, but they're just different forms of the words. So it's, it gets tricky. Perfect. All right. Define constructive custody of a deceased. Who has constructive custody of the deceased? Brittany. Is that when the funeral director has the custody? No. <laughs> what does it mean or who has constructive custody of a deceased? Adriana. Is it the next of kin? Define more. Um, the kin could be third cousin twice removed. That's technical. Um, so the closest like living relative, like say it's, say someone passes away and their parents aren't living, then like their brother or sister, or if they're married, their spouse, or if they have children, then it would be like all of their children equally. Yes, it is the person with the right to determine disposition. So that person who is the hierarchy of the next of kin has the constructive custody of the deceased. Okay. <clears throat> All right, which is true about shipping human remains via common carrier? This is a multiple choice. A, they have to be embalmed. B, they have to be sent prepaid. C, they must be in a casket. Or D, they must be accompanied with a burial transit permit. Adriana. Is it D? It is. They do not have to be embalmed. They do not have to be prepaid and they do not have to be in a casket, but they must have a burial transit permit with them. A deceased veteran must meet which of the following criteria to receive military honors. Here are your four options have an honorable discharge, obtained the rank of sergeant or higher, died during wartime, 
or have a discharge other than dishonorable. Go ahead, Brittany. Honorable discharge. Incorrect. Not correct. No? Nope. Adriana, you had yours up too? Can you repeat the four again? A deceased veteran must meet which of the following criteria to receive military honors? Have an honorable discharge, obtained the rank of sergeant or higher, died during wartime, or have a discharge other than dishonorable? Is it D? It is D. So you can also have a general discharge and receive. So it doesn't have to be honorable because there's honorable, discharged, and there's dishonorable. So it doesn't always have to be just honorable. So that's where that tricks you up, Brittany. So always list, like go through all of the options. All right. <clears throat> What are four component parts of a casket handle? Do you want me to give you options or do you guys want to try and list them? Go ahead, Rick. Uh, I'll try to list them. Um, it's, a, it's a lug, an ear. No ear. No ear, a <laughs> tip. Okay, <laughs> that's all I got. Where did you get ear? <laughs> so close. Go ahead, Brittany. Wait, I was thinking ear too. The the lug, the arm, the ear, the tip, and the handle? <laughs> There's only four. So let me give you some options. Ready? Number one is arm, bar, shell, and tip. Lug, rim, shell, and tip. Lug, arm, bar, and shell. Lug, arm, bar, and tip. Number four. Diana. It's the same thing I was going to say. I was going to say D. D. Yeah, so lug, arm, bar, and tip. What is ear? What is the ear on a casket? The part that it attaches to. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, all right. We've got a two-parter, so don't give me more than I need to know. A trocar is a hollow tube used during embalming. What year was it patented? Adriana. Adriana's been studying, I feel. Hardcore. Um, I'm just gonna guess it might not be right, but I think it's 1862. I know it's somewhere around Close. there. Close, not quite though. Anybody else wanna guess? Uh, Ricky? 1914. Nope, do you wanna throw a number, Brittany? <laughs> no clue. 18 something. I don't know. <laughs> 1868 is the year it was patented. Now, number two, who patented the trocar? Was it Dr. William Harvey, Samuel Rogers, Gabriel Clauderus, or Wallace Hooker? Brittany? Um... Can you say them one more time? <laughs> Dr. William Harvey, Samuel Rogers, Gabriel Clauderus, or Wallace Hooker? Samuel sticks out to me. Samuel Rogers. <laughs> All right. How much is the social security benefit provided to a spouse? Brittany. 255. Correct. True or false? The unlicensed office staff is required to give prices over the phone to a shopper calling for pricing per the FTC rule. Brittany. True. False. 
The unlicensed office staff is not required to give pricing over the phone. Oh. All right. Define the term Bonzi. We're into religion right now. Can you, Can you spell, spell that? that? Bonzi. Yeah. It's B O N Z E. Go through all your religions and all your terms. Is it Hinduism? No. Buddhism? We're in the right religion. What is that a term for? It's like, I kind of think like the bond is like the religious, some type of, um, I don't know, like religious officiant or clergy, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yes. No, that's the title of the Buddhist priest or monk. So it's the Buddhist priest, the officiant. So that's a point. All right. Where are we at with points? Are we anywhere near even, are we at five? Who has five? You have six. All right, we're on our way. We're doing pretty good. <laughs> this is just a straight answer. What is the division of science that studies bones? Adriana. Um, I believe it's like, I, I may be completely off, but I want to say it's like osteo, like <laughs> trying to think of what, never mind. I take it back. <laughs> I can't <Yeah>. remember. <laughs> okay, I think Ricky, you had yours up next. Oh, I don't know if Adrian, oh, I don't know if Brittany beat me to it. Um, you two had yours up. She came in third when you first I'll, went up. I'll say osteology. It is osteology. So you were close. So figure that ology is the study of, and whatever you put in the beginning is what you're studying. And so if you know osteo is bones, you can put it. I was going to say osteopath, like pathy or something like that, but I knew that wasn't right. So I was like, <laughs> osteopathy, let's just put some words. <laughs> All right. This is a um multiple choice in cases where it is necessary to use an electric spatula it must always be used with which of the following water massage cream soap or nothing ricky massage cream correct you must always have your lubricant down so either a massage cream or a stone oil or some kind of lubricant in between the electric spatula and the skin. Define pediculicide. What would you use pediculicide on in the preparation room? Thank you. Is it to kill some type of foot fungus? No, but that's a good. Okay. That's a good uh, guess. Ladies, do you have? I'm not sure. Okay. It's a chemical agent to exterminate lice. All right. Embalming is necessary in which situation? A, when the family chooses a direct burial. B, when the FTC funeral rule requires it. C, when the deceased is shipped out of town. Or D, when the family requests it. Brittany, were you up first? i sorry, I looked away. I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll go Brittany then, that's fine. D, of course. D, yes, only when the family requests it is it necessary to be done. All right, let's get into a law type question. A wrongful act by a person for which damages can be sought by the injured party through a civil lawsuit is called a, anybody know right off or do you want options? Adriana. 
Is it a tort? It is a tort. So your other options would have been mutilation, obstruction, or replevin. And replevin doesn't apply to human remains. It's a person claiming that property is theirs that they want to prove later on. So a wrongful act by a person for which damages can be sought by the injured party through a lawsuit is a tort. Using intermittent drainage during embalming will do which of the following? Decrease saturation in the tissues, create clots, make aspirating the organs unnecessary, or provide better distribution of the fluid. Adriana. Is it D? It is. Intermittent drainage we will provide better distribution of the fluid. It will not decrease saturation in the tissue. It actually increases it. It will not create clots. It will remove them. And it doesn't affect aspirating at all. Um, okay. Multiple choice. Which is not one of the five stages of grief? Bargaining, acceptance, hostility, denial. Ricky. Hostility. Yep. So it's bargaining, acceptance, denial, anger, and depression are the five. There are four guides when you're using a trocar in aspiration. They serve to access the heart, the cecum, the bladder, and which other organ? The lungs, the liver, the stomach, or the kidneys? Brittany. Is it the... I'm torn between lungs and stomach. <laughs> which do you go with? Um, I'm going to say the stomach. It is the stomach. So your four guides are your heart, your cecum, your bladder, and your stomach. Um, all right, this is a one answer question. How many items are required on the GPL per the FTC? Brittany? 16. Correct. There are 16 required items. Okay, define tardu spots. This is something anatomy. Yep, Brittany. I, I know it's um, an extravascular discoloration, mm -hmm. but I, for, I forget the cause. What is it characterized by? Like little pinpoint spots? It is. So what are those pinpoint spots called? Okay. Do you know what causes tardio spots? I forgot. <laughs> All right. We get one point for getting sort of close. We're going to keep defining it just so that everybody knows what it is. Who Can you guys define it more? Are the pinpoint like that? So those petechiae? Petechia. Petechia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead, Adriana. Do you want to speak more on this? Um, isn't the petechia caused by um, like kind of like blood vessels kind of like erupting from um, a loss of oxygen, say like a specific, bleh, like suffocation or something like that? So. Petechia is any type of that little speckled red dotting, which is from the rupture of those blood vessels. Tardu spots are a specific type of a petechia. So it's petechia is the broad term. Tardu spots are the ones caused by liver mortis that are on a body. So they're, they're not the same word. Tardu spots are a version of a petechia, but you can get petechia anytime. You know, you can get it as a living person if you, so there was a game back in the day, you'd flip your head upside down, hold your neck, and then come up and you'd get really dizzy. The kids used to do this back in high school when I was in high school. And you would get ruptured petechia all around your eyes 
but you got a little brain rush for a little while. I don't know, kids do the crazy things. But tardew spots are only on deceased. All right. The chemical secretions given off by the endocrine glands are Can you repeat that question one more time? What? Okay. Yeah. The chemical secretions given off by the endocrine glands. Ricky? Is it hormones? It is hormones. Euthanasia is a Greek word meaning what? What does the word euthanasia mean in translation? Not what is the process, but what does the actual word mean? Think Caitlin Dottie and the order of the oh. <laughs> good death. So euthanasia defined like in translation of Greek means good death. All right. Uh, this one is a multiple choice. A monument erected in memory of the dead, but may not serve as the physical resting place is called. A, cenotaph, B, crypt, C, epitaph, or D, columbarium? Brittany. A uh, cenotaph? Cenotaph, yes, it is a cenotaph. I have a two minute video on the term um, <laughs> cenotaph. So there is a lot of them, a lot for um, like soldiers and things to, that are erected for um, like masses of soldiers that are buried, but they're not actually buried where these are at. They just are in memorial of them. So cenotaph. When is the correct time to inject tissue builder with a hypodermic syringe? Before embalming, after disinfecting, before closing the mouth, or after embalming? Ricky. After embalming. Well, Brittany got it right. I called on Ricky, but. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's all good, yeah. Brittany's not even keeping score. We don't even know yeah. how many you have. We need to go. She has about seven at least. Yeah. At least. Yeah. I can remember the question. All right. And Adriana, how many do you have? I think I still have eight. All yeah. Right. We only have eight minutes left to conclude this. So somebody's got to start busting through with some answers, guys. All right. A term referring to during the dying stage or immediately after death. Here's your options. Guttural, butane, clinical, or agonal. This is a term referring to during the dying stage or immediately after death. Ricky. Agonal. It is agonal. The agonal phase is during dying and then immediately after. All right, according to Robert Mayer, the air exchange rate for a preparation room should be between what and what exchanges per hour? Brittany. 12 to 20. 12 to 20 exchanges per hour. Okay, grief that is excessive never comes to a conclusion, is accompanied by the person's awareness of not being able to resolve their bereavement is called masked. Oh, go ahead if you want to go. Ricky, sorry. Okay. I'm looking at who I know is I'm trying to say complicated grief. <laughs> What'd you say? I was gonna say complicated grief. It is not. Mm. Your options are masked grief delayed grief, chronic grief, or exaggerated grief? Adriana. Is it um, exaggerated grief? It is not. So this is grief that is excessive, 
never comes to a conclusion, is accompanied by the person's awareness of not being able to resolve. What do you say, Brittany? A uh, mass grief. <laughs> it is not. So masked grief, you do not realize that you're grieving. Delayed grief is when it's pushed off. Exaggerated grief when grief is sped up. Chronic grief is excessive, never has a conclusion, but you know it's happening. You're aware of what you're feeling. <coughs> the 30-day mourning period in the Jewish faith is called Shiva, Shalashim, Shevra or Shabbat? Ricky. B? I don't hear which one B was. Bravo. Shalashim? Yeah. It is. So Shiva is the seven day period. Shevra is the Holy Brotherhood. And Shabbat is from sundown Saturday to sundown Sunday. Who collects a benefit from an SSA-8 application? Ricky? Is it the spouse, the widow spouse? Correct. So the SS-8 is the Social Security Benefit Claim Form, and only a surviving spouse can collect a benefit from that. When a solution has all the solvent it can hold, this condition is known as saturation, sublimation, inflammation, or binary fission. Adriana. Is it saturation? It is. Sublimation is when a gas is turned into a solid or solid to a gas. Inflammation is enlarging of something. And binary fission is how a bacteria reproduces. So that's 10. Yeah. Yay! I have no ticker tape parade or anything to do. <laughs> Yay! So awesome. Adriana is the winner of our first ever Who Wants to Be a Mortician game. So, did you guys, what do you guys think? Good? Bad? Is it good to, like, I know it's challenging to do um, multiple choice when they're verbal. I think it's horrible because you hear A's and B's and you don't know which went with that. And so it's a lot harder, but. Yeah, I found that the most difficult part is trying to like just visualize the words. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, content you were anticipating? Yeah, it's the, I'm about to start my third semester next week at CCMS. So it's a lot of the stuff was stuff I learned in the first and second semester. So it was a good review for me. Good. Okay. What do you think, Brittany? Um, I just expected a mix of everything like it was, but yeah, I'm going in my third semester too, so I have a lot of studying okay. to do. I tried to get a mixed range of informational stuff. I didn't get too into, I don't know, some of it I didn't get dive into too, too much, but um, a lot of the questions as I was reading over them, as I said, it's been 20 years since I took the test. I just remember that the biggest thing was going through and I would scratch off because I had a paper, actual paper test. Are you, I think a lot of it is online. You guys do it on a computer now maybe? I think it is on the computer. So it's a lot easier when it was paper because I could go through and I could scratch out. Okay, I know it's not this and this. And then I could go back to a question if I didn't you know, know the answer right off. I could like say, okay, I know it's not this one. I know it's not this one. And then when you go back later and read it, it's like, oh, that one's really clearly the answer. Or maybe you read a question later and then you go back and you're like, oh, but that's the answer for this one. And I can go back now and I can do that. So that was a lot easier on paper. And I think that would be a little more challenging when you guys have to do it if you do it on computers now. But yeah, I, think it kind of I wish we still had the option of doing a paper test. I know. I wonder if you can request it possibly. I don't know. Um, it would make more sense, but well, I have less than a minute. Thank you guys for playing. Thank you for our first ever Who Wants to Be a Mortician? And if you are interested in signing up to test your skills on the game, please send me an email, carrie at carrienworthy.com. Bye guys. Bye.